starting point. But we will, like, our goal is to shift to um, materials more complex than kernel making. Okay. okay, Tim, I was, was also saying um, we, a very limiting factor within our project is the viscosity of the material. And for the viscosity, we want to have in our hands this type of material and we want to understand what's the type of viscosity that this is going to be doing so we can kind of move into other types of ceramics within that range of viscosity. Which other uh, ceramic do you plan to use? Well, we really want to use we have the silicon carbide, mm -hmm. but that's expensive. We can talk about the cheapest out of what you think. <coughs> so, I, so why the reason why we're using kiln and clay is because we want to get familiarized with something that is very inexpensive and then build on from there. That's already done. And I know we are going in circles, but uh, think about it. Uh, I feel, uh, uh, I mean, I see the importance, but probably you guys need to realize that uh, there could be a better justification. Mm -hmm. Are you done? Um, there's two sides to the puzzle of this capacity. One is the ability to flow the material to, to make it apart, but the second is the path is the you have to go in a furnace and it, it vaporizes <coughs> and it creates porosity. Mm -hmm. Are you going to look for porosity in the material? We have to take that into consideration totally because <coughs> of the applications that we are intending to use it for. Um, porosity definitely has to be kept at a very low um, rate because we want something that is very dense and that is going to resist those type of environments. However, we're going to be studying the porosity after we finish the, the design and the extrusion, we're going to be observing the porosity on the material on um, the geometry that we designed. So that would be part of your output data? Yeah. Uh, the second thing is surface finish. Surface finish. Um, the parts that I saw are pretty rough. Uh, and if you're talking about making precision uh, parts, what are you going to do to compensate for rough uh, green state parts? We are thinking about adding some type of polymer that it's going to serve as additive and also it's going to give a better surface finish. We also have- How is it going to do that? We have to add it to our um, raw material. And we have Again, to you're putting it in a furnace. You're going to center at ceramic temperatures. Polymer won't be there. Guys, what is the scope of your project? I think you still struggle with this every time we talk about it, right? Are you trying to make devices that are going to be put on your planes or on rockets tomorrow? No. With this device, are you going to use this specific device to make any device that will be put on an airplane? So what are you trying to solve then with this device, right? If Is surface finish important to you at this point right now? Well, it is, it is not a consideration that we have right now. Into at this moment, just because of the fact that this is um, so like in the beginning stages of the. But you guys need to know your scope, right? You need to know what the scope of that's important. That's a very important point, right? But there's also a point of you guys are a senior design team and you're trying to solve one specific problem, right? I think Dr. Echo will mention that, right? You have to be sure, again, through the talk, again, we still have a problem with what the scope is. I think if you guys in maybe slide four or five, you put a picture, right? um, kind of went through it quickly. This is the key slide, right? So right there, right? Uh, the next one. This this should have a little more time to it, I think, okay? What does work as designed mean? And what does modified printer mean? What does experiment with complex geometry mean? What does test mean? And what does experiment with those materials mean? You should, these, this is the key thing that you're trying to do. So can you talk a little bit more in detail about this specific slide? Okay, um, well, modify the printer, we don't know how this printer works, so whatever, if it's not... Well, you know how it works, right? You guys ordered it. I hope you know how it yeah, works. We didn't, no, we didn't waste our money ordering it, right? No, right. Yeah. We, know, we know how it works, but we're not 100% familiar, familiar with it, or we're trying to do something different with, um, that they're doing right now. They're doing a lot of pottery with this 3D printer, and, you know, we're trying to incorporate different materials other than kiln and clay, so, you know, it might need a bigger extruder. So what is your key concern, right? You're familiar with how the printer works, but what don't you know? What key How the printer features? works with different materials. Right. So what are you going to try to do in order to accommodate different materials? Well, 
the, if I may, <coughs> there's two components to this. There's a chemical aspect and there's a mechanical aspect. Right now, the industry currently uses hot pressing or sintering to create ultra high temperature materials. So going into a 3D extrusion <coughs> requires to take a material, the ultra high that they use, from a spray kind of consistency to a more thicker material. That is one has to excuse me, go from a very fluid viscosity to a more thicker viscosity, so it's more compatible to the printer that we currently have. The opposite of the spectrum is to change the printer instead to become more compatible with a very more fluid viscosity of printers that the industry currently uses. So either change the printer or change the material, there are those two aspects that we are still in study. And it has to be said that in, in this process, we still have to further investigate the applications of the materials and the properties of the materials that we are looking to investigate and apply because there's an extremely wide range of materials that we could use with the printer, but not necessarily it's going to meet our purposes. So that's something that we still need to investigate, and that's one, one, one of the reasons why in the sh um, chart, we just designated the investigation process as ongoing throughout the whole um, process. What I see from your concept map, it looks like, hey, this printer, if it works, which is design, then I think your uniqueness is more of designing these complex geometries. That's what I see. We are thinking also to take in a, like a different route in which we would do these complex geometries and we would not necessarily change the materials or the printer, but we would do testing on them and we would designate how these geometries work towards so flow. Can, can you explain what are those complex geometries and why they are important for this uh, aerospace industry? Okay, so currently what the aerospace industry has been trying to do is that they're trying to achieve reusability on the rockets. They want to implement a, just like airplanes, they want to implement a way for hypersonic vehicles to be constantly coming in and out. But the reason of not being able to do this is because of the re-entry speed and temperatures that these spacecrafts are experiencing. So by trying to design complex geometries, meaning nozzles and leading edges of these spacecrafts, then we are going to be able to implement them into the spacecraft. And hopefully, this is going to be implemented and they're going to be real software. Two, two words would have been sufficient. Meeting edges and nose spot. That's <laughs> So you guys have to think about it again. Remember, the idea here is there's a break, right? So just the other half of this is you need to know what geometries are useful, right? That's the big key too, right? So um, anyway, uh, I think we probably need to move on to the next one. We'll, we'll, we'll find